Hey Scotty, I just finished cooking some beans and I'm ready to rewatch the Cold Trinity. You wanna join me? Ooh, that's much better. I guess some spaghetti western could wait a little bit. Why not? Hello everyone and welcome to another one of our Lazy Swim deck reviews. The series where Scotty and I take the time to go through pre-con decks, read out the cards inside, give you an idea how strong they are, and if they synergize with a given commander, the cuts of the deck, and how good the product is straight out of the box. At the end, we score each deck inside of an expansion against each other out of 10. So grab your favorite drink, sit down, lay back and relax as we dive into this review. I am your host, Vlad, this is Scotty, and today we are going to be reviewing the latest, most wanted deck from the Outlaws of Thunder Junction Commander. So this is the latest one that we've seen, and today we're having a look at Olivia opulent outlaw so olivia wants to earn treasure and buy outlaws so this is going to be very very interesting uh, so ramping and outlaws thank you very much scotty for that wonderful introduction as always and yeah so far we've reviewed grand larceny and quick draw very interesting decks especially the grand larceny one i really like that and today we'll be diving into this one as usual it comes with an extra collector booster sample which so far has been extremely lucky for us in this round and then a hundred card deck with only 10 new cards so two less than the previous expansion a deck box 10 double-sided token cards a life wheel a strategy insert and a reference card and um, yeah that's it let's break into this let's see what message this deck has over here take a bite into crime and also of course crime always pays <laughs> so yeah if you're new here for stuff welcome also in case you didn't know we have the owners of a uh, UK exclusive car marketplace. So if you want to buy cars like these ones or sell them, trade in general, you'll be able to find them at very friendly sharks.co.uk. We will leave a link into the description down below. Shameless plug is over as we always, well, we don't really have any sponsors. Anyway, let's look into this wonderful little deck. We have the insert. We'll have the deck box in here if I can get it out. Yep alongside the booster pack and also the spinning wheel which uh, doesn't have any more illustration then let's look here at the commander deck box and you'll be able to put the cards in here if they're not fully sleeved or double sleeved either and then yeah well, let's have a look at the contents of the collector booster sample now granted inside here you'll get three cards one is a token one is an uncommon showcase and the other one is going to be any of the other showcase cards or variants as you call them so the first one is oh heartless pillage of course as well and then the next one is okay archmaze's charm i mean that is really 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 good <laughs> that is a really good breaking news card to have um yeah first printed in Mortal horizons one if i'm not mistaken but yeah that is a very good card so far the luck continues anyway well, let's have a look at the strategy insert and let's see a little bit more about olivia and the deck so on one side right here you'll be able to see what the deck is about and a little bit of the commander rules and on the other side you get to see a little bit more about olivia proper and there you go and I'd always like this because it's always a little bit of fluff about the lore and more characters to browse and discover. So that's going to be nice. I'm also excited for the modernizing commander decks, despite the fact that it's a well modern set. But let's not get into that right now. <laughs> anyway, um, yep. So we will be reviewing this around the main commander and not the general. And we will be reviewing and scoring against how good of a synergy this deck overall is against that and how supportive it is to the commander so straight out of the box is it any good really truly a lot of pre-con decks fail fail with the fact that they are jack of all trades king of none trying to do too many things at once and yeah you just miss out on a lot so i'm hoping this one won't be like that we'll have a little bit of tokens here we have inkling mercenary rats uh rogues oh well drazi okay <laughs> and assassin and uh, some food clues and so on and so forth treasure of course because it's supposed to be creating treasures i hope and then we have uh, a couple of wanted poster cards this was for uh, an lgs event so uh, when the set was released you had an lgs event you could participate and play with those extra rules in case you did not know 
And yes, let's have a look. Olivia Opulent Outlaw is a Mardu and one generic vampire assassin that costs, um, that is a 3-3 legendary creature. Has flying, and I will say, by the way, before we continue, look at how beautiful that illustration is. The fact that they've added borderless art for the main commander, straight out of the box, it is so beautiful. It is so amazing. Also, by the way, they've also shined up uh, the boxes, which is something I forgot to mention in the previous ones. It's so, so gorgeous. And yeah, if you love one of these commanders, you're definitely gonna have it in the most beautiful version ever. So I really, really appreciate that. Okay, so she has flying and lifelink and whenever one or more outlaws you control deal combat damage to a player you get to create a treasure token so one or more that's annoying i understand the deck is going to have a lot of outlaws but hey at least keep it so that it's hard for me to deal damage to a player and um yeah you put for everyone but i understand they gotta keep sometimes the level down it's just very annoying when they do it next up you have three generic sack two treasure to put two plus one plus one counters on each creature you control activate on the sorcery that is insanely strong remember that this is also a flyer and life linker so that is just overall incredibly cuckoo nuts crazy and then we have uh, vihan gold walker or gold waker sorry is a 3-3 dwarf warlock that costs marty and it's a legendary creature of course other outlaws you control have vigilance and haste great at the beginning of combat on your turn you may have treasures you control become a 3-3 construct assassin artifact creature in addition to their other types so that's nice um assassins are also outlaws so that's really really good that's really strong. Is it synergistic? Yes, in a way it is because you're buffing the outlaws just like Olivier is. And um, then the outlaws can deal more damage. And on top of that, you're getting those treasures to become something else extra in case you're sitting in a pool of them and you just don't know what to do with. That's a little fill card. And let's start the deck proper. We'll start off with Council's Judgment, a great, great card. And this was a while back then they printed, I think it was Council conspiracy i don't remember uh you let me know in the comments down below it's a sorcery cost three will of the council starting with you each player votes for a non-land permanent you do not control exile each permanent with the most votes or tied with the most votes it's a great one for politics now personally i don't actually like politics card and vote cards so i would rather not do that and just get a proper wipe or you know better but to use your own then we have helios intervention this is an instant in it costs x and two white i choose one destroy x target artifacts and or enchantments or target player gains twice x life eh, yeah better to have removals um it's an instant great but yeah all right angelic successful not a great start <laughs> i'm just gonna see it there there are better removals in whites and and in all these colors to be fair anyway angelic cell sword is a 4-4 angel mercenary it costs five it has flying and vigilance and whenever it or another non token creature enters the battlefield under your control you get to create those mercenary tokens that uh, you see in this expansion and whenever it attacks if its power is six or greater you get to draw a card which is fairly easy because i mean you do this and then another creature in you have two and you can buff it up or with Olivia. So yeah, very nice. And it has flying division. So you want to be dealing damage to the face um of a player so you get to create a treasure token um that's nice you remember you will be creating minus simon three per turn if you attack um, each player and you get to deal damage to their face each turn then we have we ride at dawn an interesting enchantment cost three it's why legendary creature spells you cast have evoke so that's really really nice if you're casting a lot of these mercenary tokens which is one way to build a deck i guess if you want to go that way and then yeah with this is going to help so much uh, convoke your uh well yeah your, your legendary creatures not just your commander and your general and there's usually quite a bit of them in a deck this big and whenever your commander attacks you get to create one more red mercenary creature token so that's really really nice i actually like that and it is synergistic so we'll keep it Ooh i love massacre girl this is a great great wipe and because you're gonna have a lot of one ones this is definitely gonna be a board wipe that leaves you a minus four four on the spot and um, because yeah it's just gonna easily wipe at the right spot so is it synergistic um it's an assassin it's an outlaw of course but it's not super synergistic to the fact that um you know you deal combat damage to a player but it's kind of synergistic in a way that it's adjacent 
you know so we'll leave it as adjacent synergistic then we have fane the broker so this is a 3-3 human warlock that costs three and you can tap it to sack a creature and put two plus one plus one counters on target creature great to make your creature more annoying and again menace and all that stuff are always great but maybe if you can bump them it's even better and then you tap remove a counter from a creature you control and create a treasure token yeah you create a treasure token that's that's one thing and um yeah with the fact that you can put and remove you can just do that as um, a nauseum as needed and then you tap sack a crown artifact create a two one white and black inkling token with flying which is black and white um this helps with the convoke as well the right of dawn and then you can untap him for four so if you have a lot you can just do a nauseum um yeah very nice it's warlock as well uh yeah i think and it's synergistic because it wants to create treasures and it does help you put stuff on the map and then let's see oh which of the moors okay it's a four four human warlock that's cost five is a death touch and at the beginning of your end step if you gain life this turn each opponent sacrifices a creature and you return up to one target creature from your graveyard to your hand man it's a way to return a creature from graveyard to your hand i'd rather use a reanimate which is actually in this expansion um so yeah uh, if you gain life it depends on how easily you gain life that's it's as simple as that because olivia does gain you life she has lifelink this then can help you get back those creatures if you don't have that if you don't have your commander or other ways because sometimes you don't have your commander play let's be honest because it usually tends to get targeted real quick then you're going to struggle it is a death toucher so it is annoying and it does deal damage to your opponents but i think this is kind of uh yeah kind of synergistic but not really adjacent and if you have better just remove it and replace it then we have nighthawk scavenger is a vampire rogue that has a one plus star power and three toughness and it costs three with two black pips flying death touch lifelink great little one and it's rogue its power is equal to one plus the number of card types among cards in your opponent's graveyard very very strong and overall and just overall synergistic gains me more life it has flying death touch so people don't really want to block it and again in just like i said with the grand larceny deck if you want this deck to shine you want to have lands or equipment or ways to make your cards unblockable to do the effect as often as possible of course with some of these it's just going to be like three treasures um yeah per, per turn which is not little and at the moment you don't have super expensive curtain skull it's an instant with undotted so it costs one generic class to cast reach opponent so it can cost up to a three and then you destroy two target creature so that's great uh, that's really really good two target creatures that's really strong um yeah I, I mean this is nice it's an instant speed and removal it most of the time is gonna cost you know only three and destroy two creatures is always nice so yeah i would keep some some general removal and this is spot removal and you can pair that with some board removals and you should be enough then we have misfortune tellers a 3-1 human warlock that costs four death toucher when it enters the battlefield or deal combat damage to a player exile target card from a graveyard if it was a creature card you get to create a 2-2 black rogue creature token so that's another outlaw and if a land card create a treasure token otherwise you gain three life very 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 nice another way to just synergize with the deck and it just gives you more of what you want to do do you want to get um a treasure or do you want to get a creature either way it's up to you or you can just gain some life very nice and it's three life it's not little and we have painful truths oh nice a sorcery costs three draw x cards and you lose x life where x is a number of colors and mana spent to cast a spell so you basically is three and it's a way to do it in this colors i don't mind one of these there are better ways to draw and i'd rather have a phyrexian arena or necropotence but that's a way to just draw off a sorcery so if you don't have those other systems then just keep this in play i guess i mean in the deck now we have camber the plunderer is a three four vampire rogue that costs four and it's legendary so remember there are quite a few legendary creatures because you have that massacre girl you have fane so you know when legendary counts like right at dawn you have that and uh, it partners with lorraine the diversion so whenever you play this uh, you go through your deck and search for lorraine 
then shuffle it, put Warrior in your hand. And then it has lifelink, great. And whenever a creature and opponent controls dies, you gain one life, you create a blood token. Uh, meh. Um, unless the partner is really, really good. I don't really see the point of this because it doesn't have any death touch. It has lifelink, which is great, which is what most vampires do, but it's not really synergistic. And maybe the partner is worth it because then it's more likely to get, ooh, Ogre Slumlord, okay. It gives death touch to all the rats and uh, whenever another non-token creature dies, you may create a 1-1 black rat creature token. And uh, yeah, it's a 3-3 three, three that costs five. It's great in this deck, funny enough, even though it does not create outlaws it is an outlaw itself um what it does do is it creates small little annoying little things that you necessarily don't want to block of course you want to keep this back and protect it and then whenever a creature dies you just keep doing the, the engine and just getting more um out of it and then you can buff them up eventually and so on and so forth so actually this is synergistic oh hex okay destroy six target creatures another way to destroy stuff targeted you don't want to wipe your board then you can do that i think this is what they're going for in this deck at the moment more targeted rather than a whole board wipe. then we have mari the killing quill three two vampire assassin costs three whenever a creature your opponent controls dies exile it with a hit counter on it and then Assassin mercenaries and rogues you control have death touch. Great. And whenever this creature deals common damage to a player, you may remove a hit counter from a card that player owns in XL if you do draw a card and create two treasure tokens. That's insane in this deck. That is so, so, so insane. Absolutely, you want that. Discrete retreat costs four. It's an enchantment aura. Enchants the land, and the land has tap. Add two mana of any one color. Spend this mana to cast uh, an outlaw spell. Wow. Very, very, very good. And whenever you cast the first outlaw spell, each turn you draw a card, you lose a life. Very flavorful. I love this. Very nice. Keep it in there. Charred Grave Robber. A 3 1 skeleton mercenary. It costs three. When it's this battlefield, return target outlaw card from your graveyard to hand. And then escape for five so you excel four other cards pay the escape cost and you play it and then it when it escapes it does so with a plus one plus one counter on it and enabling more return of our low so that's good in case you do lose some cards this and plus a uh, reanimate or a couple reanimate ca think cards would be more than enough and it's not necessarily synergistic with the main part of the deck but it is supporting the main part of the deck so that's always good we have back in town the sorcery cost x and then three return x target outlaw creature cards from rear to battlefield very good and if you have cards like these then i wouldn't mind having a bit more of a board wipe so maybe damnation would be great wrath of god um farewell not really because it's exile but you know anything that destroys that's great because then you can just bring them back um yeah that's very very good keep it here absolutely marshland bloodcaster is a three five vampire warlock that costs five and has flying so that's great and then for two Tap. rather than pay the mana cost of the next spell you cast this turn you may pay life equal to that spell's mana value so it's a small bullet citadel basically um it is small uh i mean it, i'd rather get the bullet citadel to be fair than this one but if you want to play both then why not um and if you just don't have the citadel then you can just play this one it's not bad and um yeah you still have to pay a cost and it can get really really hurtful really quickly but you know life is a resource after all is it really citadel Synergistic? Not really. Um, it allows you to play spells and it ha does have flying, so you can hit stuff in the face of the 3 5, but not really as synergistic as you may think. Then we have Vein Witch Coven, and it's a 3 3 vampire warlock that costs 3, has menace, and whenever you gain life, you may pay one blank and if you do return target creature card from graveyard to hand another great one and this is why i say this is not synergistic because you're paying life and you can't really cast certain things okay so um, for example on on cards like this you can't really do that um that's why i would only have one and maybe just get the cylinder but on stuff like this yeah absolutely keep it um it's supporting and it's a menace warlock so menace is even more so than flying uh sometimes depending on on the board flying as well is, it's really hard but yeah it's it's supporting and is good so uh, it's really really great I, as i said keep this if you want it ranko master of pranks is a 3-3 fairy rogue that costs four flying haste and whenever it deals combat damage to a player you choose any number that it can be discards a card each player discards a card each player loses a life draws a card and each player sacrifices a creature flying haster great little card and it's um synergy with the main deck um i mean yeah it's, it's pretty good and it gives you more things to do and yeah next up we have dire fleet ravager 
Uh, it's a 4 4 that costs 5. It's a creature or pirate wizard. Menace, Death Touch. Whenever it enters the battlefield, each player loses a third of their life rounded up. Uh, I mean, it's Menace and Death Touch is annoying. And each player loses, it's gonna hit you worse than others sometimes because if you're playing, you know, for life, then you're gonna be struggling with it unless you have a lot of lifelink. And again, I don't always assume that my commander is in play all the time, always alive and always kicking, you know, if I'm, if you know what I mean, because uh, let's be honest, at the moment we only have, I think, two, maybe three lifelinkers in the whole deck. So be careful with this. It is strong, menace and death touch on a 4-4 body, and it does a lot, um, but be careful with this and replace it if it's not up to par. Um, but yeah, it's, it's synergistic for sure. Mirror Entity is a 1-1 one, one shapeshifter, change lane, they cost 3, and um, for X until the end of turn, creatures you control have base power and toughness. Now, this one is great if you have a lot of tokens, and at the beginning we sort of went in that direction, which is creating mercenary tokens. Um, if you go that way, then yes, absolutely keep this in. If not, then don't. It's as simple as that. I will keep it as non-synergistic because, yeah, it's just for that reason. Um, Dire Fleet Daredevil is a 2-1 human party that costs two first striker and whenever it enters battlefield you exile an instant or sorcery card from an opponent's graveyard you may cast it this turn and mana of any type can be spent to cast a spell if that spell will be put in a graveyard you exile it instead um first striker pirate that allows you to play out of your opponent's graveyard is okay um again it's great uh, for those instant sorcery cards that are really, really strong, but it's very dependent on what your opponents have played. So keep it with a grain of salt. And unfortunately, first strike is not as strong as uh, flying. So over this one, I will keep, for example, the marshland blockcaster. Um, so yeah, definitely just use it with a grain of salt. And then we have Captain Lannery Storms, a 2-2 human part, costs three, has haste. Whenever it attacks, you create a treasure token. Yay, well, that's always good. And sacrifice the token to give it plus one, plus zero until the end of turn. I think I would rather keep this for the first ability than the second one, realistically, because you want to use those treasure tokens to buff the board with Olivia more so than just buffing one creature. But other than that, an, an extra body that continuously creates, that has haste, that if you give it, um, a, a, you know, for example, this is one of those creatures that I would protect as much as I could because then I can just have a constant flow of treasure tokens um given also what olivia does that's just just great then we have seize the spotlight and this is a uh, sorcery cost three it's red each opponent chooses fame or fortune for each player who chose fame gain control of the creature the player controls until the end of turn untap this creature and they gain haste until the end of turn and then for each player who chooses fortune you draw a card and create a treasure token that is very 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 good and these politics cards are all right up my alley because these actually uh well, give you advantage no matter what, and that's really, really nice. And more treasure tokens is always good. And we have Grenzo Havoc Razor. It's a 2-2 Goblin Rogue that uh, costs two red pips. And whenever a creature you control deals combat damage to a player, choose one. Go attack a creature that player controls. That is really annoying. Or exile the top card of the player's library until the end of turn may cast this card. And you may spend mana as though you were mana of any color to cast the spell. Not synergistic. Yes, it's a Goblin rogue so the rogue part is synergistic but other than that meh uh angress marauders the 4-4 four, four human party costs seven if a source you control will deal damage to permanent or a player deals double that damage to that permanent in or player instead um and eh? i mean this is more of uh if you go wide it's really really good uh but in this current deck i don't know at this cost if it's really really worth it what you can do with the treasure tokens um yeah you can definitely ramp it much quicker but is it worth it that would be the the thing that you need to think about it is it really worth it there are cards that are insanely good at this you know cause that can definitely give you much more advantage than just an alpha strike for example there's a chroma's um what is it a chroma's uh blah, 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 blah. the artifact that just buffs everything um so for that cost you could just do that one and then you just have double strike and etc 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 um so yeah, keep that in mind. Not that necessary and not that great. Anyway, I have Captivating Crew as a 4-3 human pirate and it costs 4. 
And for four, you gain control of target creature and opponent controls until the end of the turn. Yeah, and tap it. It gains haste until the end of the turn. Activate only the sorcery. Again, what are we trying to do? Are we trying to play with our opponent's deck? Or are we actually trying to make our outlaws bigger? I understand outlaws just steal and do stuff like this, but a little bit less of that would have been great. Rain of Riches, that's great. It's an enchantment. It costs five. When it enters the battlefield, you get to create two treasure tokens. And the first spell you cast each turn, that mana from a treasure was spent to cast has cascade so therefore the more treasure you create the more you can cast the more you can get in board um absolutely great in this one i wonder if this is gonna have also the wing con which was from the excellent it was an enchantment that says i think if you have 20 treasure tokens or 10 treasure tokens, i don't remember i think it's 10 um you get to win the game so maybe that will be in here as well lorian the diversion is a 3-3 human rogue cost three and partnering with Campbell the plunder okay first striker second artifact a creature go target creature uh, it's okay there are better uh, even in the new sets in the new expansion you have outlaws that do more so what the deck wants to do than this one um so yeah maybe just change it mass mutiny is a sorcery cost five each opponent for each opponent gain control up to one target creature that that player controls until the end of the turn and tap those creatures they gain haste until the end of the turn so now we swapped completely direction from going uh from a kindred deck and trying to do what the commander wants to do to what outlaws tend to do which is stealing and using those resources now if you're only doing this that's great but the problem is you're also creating tokens at one point so it's starting to move away a little bit too much from focus it's losing focus so for me this kind of stuff is great and um for example in the previous expansion there was a deck with red that really could use these cards for playing with your opponents and goading them and all that stuff great but in this deck not necessarily if you want to have a bit more of a consistent game plan that before sunrise an instant until the end of turn all low creatures you get you control get plus one plus zero and gain that creatures deal damage equal to his power to target creature very 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 nice and uh um, not bad it's it's a way to burn stuff uh and definitely kill a lot of things especially with the fact with olivia you can buff up things so good one great water fixer this is a four four lizard mercenary cost for each other creature card on your graveyard it has a core and x where x is the spawn value very very good very synergistic then we have line for insurance i think it's an enchantment cost five and it has extort so whenever you cast a spell you may pay one and if you do each upon loses life you gain that much life and whenever a non target creature dies you lose a life and create a treasure token so great little way to create treasure tokens i really like that and then we have brina the demagogue a one three bird warlock that costs three has flying whenever a player attacks one of your opponents and if the opponent has more life than another of your opponents that attacking player draws a card and you put two plus one plus one counters on a creature you control um it's giving an extra card to that attacking player. It is politics and it could actually be worth it. So um, at least they can move with one creature to attack your opponents to get this, but they can still attack you. So it's not a complete deterrent. It's a tricky one. It is flying and it is a warlock and it does put counters more. So why not? Oh, Queen Marchisa. Oh, wow. Or my Marquesa, depending on how you spell it. Uh, so this is a 3-3 human assassin that costs four. That touch and haste. When it enters the battlefield, you become the monarch. And at the beginning of your upkeep, if an opponent is the monarch, you create a 1-1 one, one black assassin creature token with death, touch and haste. Um, this is one of those where I don't necessarily always like being the monarch but because the synergy you can have here and because those tokens can be brought up to be really really big so we're now swapping back to the tokens and the, the mercenary then yeah perhaps in this deck the mercenary wouldn't be too bad and she is a great great um commander as well i love oblivion now nah, it's okay it allows you to draw not necessarily a great thing academy manufacturer so um this allows you to create an extra treasure every time and a clue and a food token instead of just creating one of each. Uh, it's really good in a deck like this one that cares about treasures. Uh, so I would keep this one and remove, for example, the idol. Bounty board. It's a 95 that costs three generic. Tap to add one mana of any color. That's nice. And then for one and tap it, put a counter on target creature. And you can only do that as a sorcery. And whenever a creature with a bounty counter on it dies, each of its controller opponents... Uh, controllers opponents draw card and gains two life um meh 
too much of an advantage for your opponents. Um, there are better artifacts, definitely, that do what you need to do with this deck. Then we have Fetid Heath. So it's nice to see these lines again. Command Beacon, that's not bad at all. Then we have Vault of the Archangel. So this allows you to give Death Touch and Lifeline. That's always nice. Dragon Skull Summit is very nice. Temples, yes, exotic. Temple, Cliff Top Retreat, very nice. Isolated Temple, very nice. Bonners and Cleave, draw a card. Activate only if you control a creature power four or greater. It's going to happen. There are better ways to draw cards. And uh, yes, it's a land, but I'd rather have better stuff that helps me. For example, you know, there's Smothering Tithe. That's insanely good. You have Phyrexian Arena. That's insanely good. And you pair the two. It's much better than this one. Case of Coilos, very nice. Um, Battlefield Forge, very nice to see reprinted. Sulfur Springs, the Rugged Prayer. So yeah, the, the lands are getting there. I will say that they're slowly listening. I'm saying it would be nice that instead of the temples, you add, well, I mean, I guess you can replace them with surveil lands, but not necessarily. Uh, it would only do that if you're playing around the graveyard. You could just do uh, the shock lands, that'd be great. And at least one triumph. That'd be wonderful. And then Desolate Mire, Shadow Blood Ridge, uh, Canyon Slow, Smaller Marsh, Black Leaf Cliffs, that's nice. Mist Meadow Silk. This is a Kithkin Rogue, it's a 1 1, it costs 2. And this is from the Lorwyn block, if I'm not mistaken. It's a lifelink protection from mana value 3 or greater. So this is very nice. It's another way of making your creatures unblockable. Granted, in black, you have fear. So I'd rather use fear. Um, and by other means to give it unblockable more so than that but hey oh that's something that you can do if you if necessary and does synergize uh, so if you have a better effect replace this one a requisition raid is a sorcery with spree and you either destroy an artifact or destroy an enchantment or put a plus one plus one counter on uh, each creature target player controls i mean this is a good one um it's not a bad one and this pre one actually I, I believe this is pretty good in this deck uh there's a rare one which is the showdown one or whatever it was that uh, is also good that you might use in this deck but this is pretty good so don't discount it too much changeling out cast is a shapeshifter so it's an outlaw as well it's a one one cost one and it can't block and can't be blocked exactly the kind of th creatures i was thinking in black very very nice feed the swarm this red tiger creature or enchantment opponent controls you lose life equal to the permanence value uh there are better ways to destroy stuff and exile stuff and so on and so forth so yeah it's best to use those deadly dispute wonderful 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 card great to see it reprinted here it's an instant and it's a three for one it costs Two, as an initial cost to cast this spell, sacrifice an artifact or a creature, which is fairly easy with the, all the tokens that you have, and then draw two cards and you then create your treasure token, so it replaces itself as well. Um, yeah, you get an effect. If you have a sack effect as well, you're on top of that, that's insane. Very good card. Morbid Opportunist. This is a human rogue. So one three, it costs three. Whenever one or more other creatures die, draw a card. This ability triggers only once it's turn. There are better effects that are not limited. Um, yeah, so no. Um, Etherborn Marauder is a two two Etherborn rogue. Costs four. Flying lifelink, great. And when it's a battlefield, move any plus one plus one counters from other permanents to it. Wow. Well, this can become insane. If you have a board with like five creatures and each have had two plus one plus one counters, um, yeah, that's 10 counters on this. This becomes a 12 12 flying life linker. Just like that. Just saying, you know? <laughs> yeah, so that's insanely good in this kind of deck. Otherwise, yeah. And of course, if you can protect it, whew, you're going to be just decimating your opponents. Tenured Incaster is a 2 2 Vampire Warlock that costs 5. When it enters battlefield, you put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on target creature. And whenever creature you control with a plus 1 plus 1 counter on it attacks, each opponent loses a life and you gain a life. Very, very nice in this kind of deck because you're going to have a lot of counters. So, again, we're moving back to the counter idea. So, yeah, we'll talk more about that. But yes, it's synergistic. Shoot the shoot. Sheriff. It's an instant destroy target non outlaw creature for two. So, this for example is okay. Um, there are better removals, exiles, destroys, and all that. They can destroy not just specific creatures. Uh, you get to remove it. Lightning Grease, great to have. Haste and Shroud, wonderful. You want all the boosts that you can get in here that gives you protection and haste. And so that's definitely a giver. And I'm was surprised that uh, I didn't see this in the Grand Larceny deck as well. Impulsive Pilferer as a Goblin Pyre is a 1 1 that costs 1. When it dies, you create a treasure token and you can uncore it. It's synergistic and uh, you can go Kamikaze and replace itself basically. It's not bad if you have better replace it, but if not, just keep it. <laughs> Shiny Impetus, I love this. This is a lemur, I think. Uh, so it costs 
plus three and send Jaminara and Shadi Kisha gets plus two plus two and is goaded. And whenever Shadi uh, creature attacks, you create treasure token. Very nice way to get off the board a creature from attacking you straight up and also keep getting those treasure tokens. So yeah, I like that quite a lot. Humble Defector is a two one human rogue. You can tap it for to draw two cards, target opponent gains control of Humble Defector. And no, next. Glittering Stockpile, great one, treasure. And it's an artifact, it costs three, it's red. Tap to add one red, put a stash counter on it, and then tap stack it, add X mana of any color, or X is a number of stash counters. Very, very good. Keeps doing more of what it wants to do. And it's a way to ramp as well, so very, very nice. Boros Charm, nice, it's an instant. It costs Boros and well, you choose one. You either deal four damage to target player or planeswalker. Permanence you control gain is destructive multi in the end of turn. Target creature gains double strike multi in the end of turn. I like this. It's protection. You need protection in this. Um, uh, Teferis as well, or anything that you can get. There's so many in white nowadays as well. Uh, they can give board protection and targeted protection. It can get rid of something. Yeah, it's just overall great. And I would keep this one in the deck. Then we have the Arcane Signet. Wonderful. Trade Blazers. Boots, great. Great. So this, and all the boots that you can get in, as I said, Grand Larceny as well. Uh, Bandits Hall, that's an artifact. Whenever you commit a crime, you pull a little counter on it and this ability triggers only once each turn. Um, you do have a lot of ways to commit crime in this, not gonna lie. And um, you add one mana of any color and for two tap, uh, remove two loot counters to draw a card. It's another way of drawing cards and to uh, have mana of uh, any color. It's up to you if you want to keep it. If you don't have anything better, keep it. Ooh, the Ars of Signet, Soul Ring, the Ragdos Signet, a Command Tower, the Bajuka Bog as usual, Passive Master Sheet, Rogue's Passage, very good. Surprise, it wasn't in the past a deck as well. Demolition Field, Sack it to destroy target on basic land and opponent controls, and then it, they go and search for something. Tainted Peak, that's nice. Sun Home Fortress of Legion, um, then Nomad Outpost, Temple of Frost God, and then we get two planes. A grand total of four swamps and two mountains. So that's the deck with the least, least basic lands of the most so far. What do we think of the deck for the recap? Hmm, it's interesting. It went many different directions. Here's the thing. You are in a deck that wants to create tokens. Okay, as we said for the commander and the general, you want to create tokens, you want to buff them up. You want to make them unblockable or in some way or another deal damage to your opponent's face. And black has plenty of that. Therefore, the cards that don't go into this idea, this direction, just have no place in this deck. There are all those cards that are really, really good in this expansion. So you can definitely feed in more of those cards in here to make sure that your outlaws get more stuff out of your own cards. And uh, yeah, the cards that are in here just not synergistic enough with the deck as a whole. And um, yeah, you can bring back more stuff. Like I said, I think in the end, the way that the deck is don't necessarily need the Witch of the Moors. There are better effects to that, um, more target and better. Um, yeah, it needs a bit more protection. That's another thing. If you're going wide with a lot of tokens, it takes a wee while to build up um, those tokens, including treasure, not just creatures. And without protecting your side of the board, you're gonna just be really annoyed if somebody has a board wipe, which is quite often at least one or two board wipes or exiles or whatever um, it will happen. So you need that protection. You need better targeted removal. And I'm a little bit disappointed because let's be honest black red and white have some of the best targeted spot removal in the game and so you have kind of like these wipe removal that are targeted but realistically you either you want something that does better you know um something that just does better and doesn't cost you so much and um yeah perhaps a little bit more narrowing there a little bit more of that and regarding the artifacts let's be honest uh I don't know, you you want to ramp, but to a certain degree, and that's the last thing that I want to discuss. Um, what are we doing with all these treasures that we have? Yes, you can keep, you know, sacrificing and buffing, and that's insanely good. But I think there's a bit of a missed opportunity in putting some of the bigger creatures that could benefit from having a little bit more of that. Um, there's a black market, there's that enchantment that if you have uh, X treasure to tokens, you win the game. There are other cards that, that can benefit from uh, creatures dying, tokens dying, and also from um, just tokens in general. And yeah, 
uh, if you have like a couple of top ender, like three, four, let's say top ender cards that are really, really great. I would think that's a good idea to put them in here, especially if you have flying, you know, the dragons, uh, also the Kaldeheim one. That's another great one because that one gives you treasures. But anyway, I don't want to give you too much <laughs> on a guide on how you can build this deck, but there are definite slots that can be better filled. And because of that, I think this deck um, realistically it's quite there at a seven. It's kind of like an in-between 6.5 and seven on this one. It's in between. So let's say it's between 6.5 and seven. It's definitely better than the quick draw in the matter of that it's less scatterbrained to a degree, to a degree because this is quite a lot of cards, but you can still do what you want to do because these are outlaws and overall, but at the same time, yeah, it's still too scatterbrained for my liking. Therefore, I think it's between 6.5 and 7.0. I think this is the first deck that I'm putting in the middle of something. But yeah, that's it. This is what we think about the deck. Um, let us know in the comments down below if you agree, if you have any changes you would have done or if you don't agree. We read and reply to every single one of them. If you like these videos, make sure to give a thumbs up and sub to the channel as it does help small channels like ours a lot. And yeah, make sure to um, give a look at our videos if you're interested. Other than that, until the next where we will be unboxing the desert bloom deck we wish you a lovely day from sky and i we wish you a lovely day a blessed day be good be kind and we'll see you in the next video bye